Hello everyone, welcome to another Kinetic Tutoring episode. Today we're going to be looking at this question as recommended by Thomas Sun. He is asking, he asked me to solve FRQ3 on the practice AP exam for AP Physics C Mechanics from 2017. So let's just get straight into it. Here we go, here's part one of our problem. I'm gonna move this over here so you guys get a better view of the prompt and everything. So let's take a let's read what it says really quick. A sphere of mass M and radius R is released from rest at the top of a curved track of height H. The sphere travels down the curved track and around a loop of radius R. The sphere rolls without slipping during the entire motion. Point A on the loop is at height R and point B is at the top of the loop. The rotational inertia of the sphere is 2, two mr squared over, over 5. Express all your answers in parts A through D in terms of m, little r, h, big R, and physical constants as appropriate. Assume that r is much smaller, little r is much smaller than big R. On the dots below, represent the sphere and which represent the sphere, draw and label the forces, not components, that are exor exerted on the sphere at point A and point B, respectively. Each force might be must be represented by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the dot. All right, so let's draw our dot our circumstance at point A, where we have a ball here, and at point B, where we have a ball here. So here we can see at point A, we're obviously going to have gravity. So it's right force of gravity going straight down. And additionally, we're gonna have the normal force that is exerted by um, by the track on the ball that is perpendicular to the track. So the normal force is going to be going this way. And up on top of that, we also have friction, which is going to be going downwards. So we can say force of gravity plus frictional force. There you have it, and um, the reason the frictional force is going downwards is because at this point the ball is going upwards and the friction is going to be going in the opposite direction of the ball. And then sphere at point B, we're just going to have our force of gravity once again, and the normal force is also going to be pointed down. So then we would also have our normal force in this direction. There you go. All right, there you have it for part A. Now let's take a look at part B. It's asking us to derive an expression for the speed of the spear at point A. So the way we're gonna do this is by counting, um, is by using conservation of energy. So as we can see here, the ball is not rolling. The ball is not moving in a translational manner. It's just at this point H at rest at time T is zero. And that means that the mechanical energy of our system is equal to mgh. And now let's take a look at the energy at our point here. We know that we're going to have a kinetic energy that is translational, one half mv squared. We know that we have a kinetic energy that is rotational, which is going to be one half i omega squared. And on top of that, we still do have some um, some potential energy due to gravity because as you can see here uh, it is we are not at the ground quite yet we're a little bit above the ground uh, a height r so we're going to add potential energy mgr there we go all right so now we're solving for v we know that omega can be written as v over r since the ball is not slipping so let's rewrite our equation mgh equals one half mv squared plus one half we can write out our inertia as it is given in the equation 2mr squared over 5 and then we can write our omega squared as v squared over r squared plus mgr again. 
as you guys can see here the r squared up top and the r squared at the bottom are going to cancel the two on the bottom and the two on the top are going to cancel and we can get rid of the m as it is found in all of the terms here boom 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 and that'll leave us with g h equals one half v squared plus one fifth v squared plus g r and finally from here we're just going to um, move everything to the other side and isolate v so we'll get g h minus g r which is just g parentheses h minus r is equal to one half plus one fifth which is seven tenths v squared meaning that our final speed I'm gonna erase all of this but our final velocity will be equal to the square root of 10 sevenths g h minus r there you have it here is your velocity equation and I'm not going to get rid of it because this is going to come in handy for the next part of our FRQ so let's go take a look at that derive an expression for the normal force the track exerts on the sphere at point A as you can see here we have our point A I'm gonna I'm gonna redraw our our diagram of our situation at point A here we have the ramp here we have our ball normal force gravity and friction now let's go back to the next page alright so as we can see here the only force that is going in the direction that is in the middle of the circle is our normal force meaning that our normal force is going to be our centripetal force so we can write it here e n equals centripetal force and we know that our centripetal force equation is simply going to be mv squared over r and the reason I kept this velocity here is because we can simply plug in this velocity that we have ha found in this equation and by squaring the velocity we'll just get rid of the square root so we'll get m over r times what's inside of the square root here which is 10 g h minus r over 7 and there you guys go that is what your normal force is equal you could just leave your answer like that get rid of the parentheses if you like simplify it a little bit but that's good as well now let's calculate the ratio of rotational kinetic energy to translational kinetic energy all right so basically what we're doing here is we get our rotational kinetic energy which is one half mv squared over our um translational or here is our sorry let me let me start that over i'm going to erase everything that we have on the board in order to make it more clear so calculate the rate ratio of the rotational kinetic energy to the translational kinetic energy okay so we have ke rotational over ke translational write out both of their equations one half i omega squared over one half m v squared we see that the one halves don't really matter we can cancel these out let's write the let's write i and omega in terms of m and v we have our equation two fifths m r squared we have our v squared over r squared these r squares cancel so we get two fifths mr two fifths mr squared or rather two fifths mv squared over mv squared these two cancel and you're left with two fifths so your ratio of kinetic energy rotational over kinetic energy translational is going to be two fifths now let's take a look at the next part 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 D 
the minimum release height necessary for the sphere to travel around the loop and not lose contact with the loop at point B is H min. The sphere is replaced with a hoop of the same mass and radius. Will the radius, will the value of H min increase, decrease, or the say the same? All right, guys. So we know that when we have a hoop instead of a sphere, a sphere, our inertia is simply going to be m r squared instead of the two fifths m r squared which we had previously. And since our inertia is higher, that means that more of the potential energy is, been be tr is being translated to rotational energy, meaning that we're going to have a sphere that is rotating faster, but is not going to be moving translationally as fast. And this means that we need a higher value of h min in order for the the uh, ring to complete the the circle so h min is going to increase and you can just write down the explanation that I gave you and you should get full credit now let's take a look at the last part of our problem here we go the sphere is again released from a known height h and eventually leaves the track at point c which is at a height r above the bottom of the loop as shown in the figure below. The track makes an angle of theta above the horizontal at point C. Express your answer in part E in terms of m, r, h, big R, theta, and physical constants as appropriate. Calculate the maximum height above the bottom of the hoop that the sphere will reach. All right, so the way we're going to solve this is using kinematics. So let's rewrite our velocity that we had at point A because we know that's the same velocity we're going to have at point C. And the reason to, that this is the case is because there's no work being done. So the velocity is going to be the same when they have the same potential energy, the kinetic energy at this point and this point is also going to be the same. And um so let's redo the calculations because I don't exactly remember. I remember it was 7 tenths mv squared is equal to mgh minus r. We got rid of our m. And so v was the square root of 10 sevenths. G H minus R. That's what we had. So from here, we're just going to plug this into our kinematics equation. We know that this is our total velocity. So we're going to have velocity components. If this is our V, we're going to have our V cos theta, which is going to be the horizontal component of velocity. And we're going to have our V sine theta, which is what we're looking for. We know at the highest point, we're going to have a horizontal velocity of zero because we know that as it's going upwards, the velocity is upwards, the velocity reaches zero, and then it comes downwards and the velocity becomes negative. So at the highest point, we're gonna have a velocity of zero. At the beginning, we're gonna have a velocity here. That's shown here. And since we don't have time and we're looking for distance, we're gonna use the formula that does not include time. And that is v final squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ad in order to find our distance here. We know that our v final is going to be 0 because we're looking at the point where the, the height is 0, or the height is at a maximum. So we get 0 squared, which is 0, is equal to our velocity squared, which is just this without the square root plus 2ad. We know that our acceleration is gravity because that's the only thing that is affecting the um, acceleration. And we know that gravity, we can just write it as negative 10. So we'll get minus 20d. Now we'll move this over to the other side. I'm gonna erase this here in order to give us more space. Once you move it to the other side, you'll get that 20d is equal to 10 
sevenths g h minus r from here you can multiply out the g I'm gonna erase this all here you'll, and you're gonna divide both sides by 20 and you'll get that d is equal to 100 over 140 h minus r and there you have it your distance is just going to be 5 sevenths h minus r but the thing you must not forget is that this is the distance the distance that we found is the distance above this point c that the maximum height is going to be but what it is asking us is the maximum height above the bottom of the loop so what we're going to have to do is add a r to this equation here in order to complete it because the maximum height it's going to reach above this point is going to be 5 sevenths h minus r but the maximum point it's going to reach above the bottom of the system is going to be that value that we found plus an additional r so there you have it there will be your final answer for part e and yeah that's all i have for you guys today um i'd like to thank the commenter for having such a great question if you guys still need anything else to be explained, make sure to leave it in the comments below and I will try my best to clear up any confusion. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out and I will try to answer those as well. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Make sure to have a great rest of your day and tune in later for more physics tutorials.